All right, everybody take a deep breath and bear with me as I say the next sentence because it's going to be a doozy. Found only in the collector booster product, Modern Horizons 2, hang on. <laughs> Found only in the collector product, Modern Horizon 1 retro frame reprints, which will only be in foil or foil etched, are coming along with the Modern Horizons 2 set. Jake, I tried it and I lost it halfway through the sentence. You did great, man. The Modern Horizons 1 reprints, they appear in Modern Horizons 2 collector boosters. We're gonna talk about which ones you need to target for EDH when they start to hit rock bottom because they're not gonna dip for long. The video starts right now. Special thanks to our Patreon supporters who power our channel. Check out our Patreon for monthly giveaways, exclusive content, and even a starring role in our fanfight series. Link in the description below. Shop at TCG Player using our link in the description below and directly help our channel. Hello and welcome to the day. Thank you for spending your time with us. I'm Jake. I'm Joel. Welcome back to another episode of Jake and Joel are Magic. We are going to talk about a very specific variant in a very specific location within a very specific set but before we do get into this confusing mess if you would think about hitting that like button if you like the video by the end of it hit that dislike button if you don't it's the best way to support the channel with just the click of a button you can head on over to patreon and get involved on a deeper level if you want we're going to talk about modern horizons 2 there are modern horizons 1 cards in it they're specifically in collector boosters only. They do not have a non-foil variant. They only appear as etched or foil etched or uh, etched or foil. Sorry. No, no that's perfect. You Keeping nailed it. it. Keeping it close. It yeah. is very specific variant inside a very specific set. The reason that we're even going through this is because there's no real reason for us to ever see these again. They are reprinting inside Modern Horizons 2, these Modern Horizon 1 cards in a retro in a retro frame, only foil or foil etched. There are some very good cards for Commander in this group of cards, and they're really only going to see their bottom price over the next three to four weeks. And the reason we're saying all of this is because as people start to open this product in mass, they are going to be recouping value. And so you're going to have players that are opening these packs who might not value these, who might just put them on eBay at a certain price. Figure out what price works for you on these cards. We're going to talk about some super impactful ones. Let's get into it. Earlier in the week, we talked about fetch lands that should be targeted. We've talked about some of the other variants and very expensive cards. What price you should target them at, which cards to target. And this list today is more of a which cards you should target talisman of creativity jake this one just sort of represents all the talismans they reprinted the talismans all five of them in these retro frames with this foil or etched foil treatment and these are going to be playable in commander i mean until something strictly better gets printed right like these will probably just be in the format forever yeah and they also have a little bit of overlap with modern as well certain ones do i know that talisman of creativity is played in a couple small niche specific uses but we are talking about EDH and Commander. I'm gonna be completely honest. I like the foil retro version more than the etched. The etched is a little bit dark for my liking. I've seen them, I've yet to hold one. I can't wait to uh, crack open a couple packs because uh, it is notable again that you are gonna get retro cards in these collector booster packs. And this is the only spot where you can get the cards that we're talking about right now. So overpriced packs. These cards are probably going to have a little bit of an inflated price, but they will dip, but not for long. The talismans are very, very strong, really good for EDH decks. They represent a nice mana rock that floats for colors. A lot of mana rocks, they only do colorless, right, Joel? But the talismans, they actually float for colors. They kind yeah. of operate like a pain land. Yeah, I love artifacts in this retro frame in particular. Artifacts and lands are really strong to me visually in these retro frames. And so I personally know that I will be trying to acquire one each of the talismans in this frame while it's available before they start climbing up in price. Talismans are regularly about a dollar or two. They're an uncommon card that's still got that dollar or two, you know, kind of pricing. And so you're not probably gonna find any of these foils or foil etched for that price, 
But, you know, hopefully, I would say single digits. If you can find these under 10, I would 10, hope great. single digits, but I'm thinking like maybe 10, 10 to yeah. 15 for some of these. Yeah. Yeah. We'll see. Next up, Jake, it's a land. It's a land in this frame. You know, oh, fetch baby. lands aren't on this list because those are technically Modern Horizons 2 cards. And in this video, we're only talking about cards that are Modern Horizon 1 reprints in the retro frame. Prismatic Vista is very good, though. It is essentially a fetch land. Yeah, it's a fetch land. And when this card was originally printed, there was just so much hype around it. And yeah, it's just very nice. You know, a lot of the time uh, with fetch lands, you're going to grab... You can grab basics, but a lot of the time with fetch lands, you're trying to go and you're trying to grab shock lands. A lot of the time that hurts you because you're going to shock yourself. This is just an alternative land that thins out your deck, lets you grab a basic instead. So for anybody who's playing like delve strategies or anything like that, you know, Prismatic Vista goes to the yard. This is something that can help feed the Gurmag Angler and get it onto the battlefield nice and early. But Again, just anything that thins the deck is going to be really attractive. And for EDH, sometimes you need to just grab a basic. Oh, yeah. Prismatic Vista is a $30 card from Modern Horizons. About $40 for the Zendikar Rising Expedition version of it. Jake, do you think that this is going to fall between the regular base printing and the Zendikar Rising Expedition? Or do you think it's going to go past the Zendikar Rising Expedition price of 40 I think this will actually go past the Zendikar Rising Expeditions because the Zendikar Rising Expeditions aren't actually like as scarce. We learned this from the Zendikar Rising Collector product. They're easily, there's two seated expeditions in each of these collector boxes, the Zendikar Rising ones. And then you're finding like two or three more additional expeditions. So Prismatic Vista, you know, I think in these big expensive packs and in this retro frame is going to command a higher premium in the retro uh, border uh, more than the expedition border. Yeah, I would say if you can find any between that 30 and 40, like that's a hell of a deal because yeah. you're getting it cheaper or just a little bit more expensive than its base printing or its only other special printing. So that's about where I would target Prismatic Vista. Jake, this is Sword and Truth of Justice originally printed in Modern Horizons 2, and this one is in a place where it's also representing its brother sword, Sword of Sinew and Steel. Both of these, this artifact frame, man, I just can't get enough of this artifact frame. I love it. Right. It's that old border. It's very beautiful. Lots of nostalgia. But... Again, remember, it is a nice shiny gimmick, but these cards are going to be very, very attractive in EDH and players who are just going to want that scarcity. You have to really think from a commander perspective, what card is the most pimp version? Um, you know, this is going to be it. Is it going to be the etched or is it going to be just the normal retro foil? Yeah. I think it's probably going to be the retro foil, at least in my opinion. But I don't know, maybe some people do like the etched. If you do, let us know in the comments or let us know what your preference is and why. But yeah, it, the swords are just kind of like, you know, as an MTG player, you just kind of go to the swords as like, well, these are probably where you would go. These are the most notable, most impactful cards. And uh, it's really hard to leave them off the list. Yeah, absolutely. $22 single printing for Truth and Justice, Jake, that we've only seen this in Modern Horizons. We only have this version. It's about $22. I mean, if again, if you can find any of these for that price, absolute buy. Scoop. But I, yeah. I mean, Jake, if you're talking about 2X modifier on a foil, do you think that this is a $40 card? What would, what would you try and target this one at? Um, You know, it, it really, as far as the prices go, it comes down to make sure you do research research on tcg ebay compare this prices video. of the original uh, of the original version of this card but you know it really comes down to pick a price that's going to work for you and then don't regret it when you buy in at that price but the yeah. big thing you need to remember is wait at least like two to three four weeks once the set is being opened in mass i know that we have dungeons and dragons right around the corner and everybody's already going to start forgetting about modern horizons too and we have a bunch of boxes that haven't even made it to the player's hands so i hope a big substantial dip for this card and all the cards that we're talking about on this on this list but you have to pick a price that works for you yeah 22 dollars for that i would say anything within you know the 30 dollar 35 dollar range for that I yeah. would be willing to pay for it. Sword of Sinew and Steel is like a $12 card. So anything just under 20, just barely over 20, that would be a really good price for this single variant of the card, which again, I'm not trying to play into anybody's FOMO, but 
it's going to be now that these cards are available and it's going to be about like jake said three to five weeks from street release date jake force of negation i mean what Big hasn't one. been Big said one. about this card but it's i mean this frame with this card is just so beautiful multi-format staple negate free negate 81 so, um, card 81 card this is the yeah. kind of one that's going to be one of the chase lotto cards in this set i mean you're talking maybe double that 300. right yeah. three times that that's what i'm saying this card's going to be hugely hugely priced and very hard to acquire yeah there's probably some people that are watching this video going god guys please don't tell everybody the secrets of how to get good cards during pre-release but you know we do want you to kind of have a, a jump on it if you do happen to follow our channel we're gonna hook you up with these these tips i would say for this card and this is a card that i can i can kind of look at and we can look at the historical price of it the og copy I still think will hold a premium as far as the foil variant over this new one. Um, this is a card that can be reprinted again. It could pop up in Secret Layer. It can pop yeah. up in Modern Horizons 3, and it's a retro shifted that just appears again. Maybe it has like a purple border this time. Who the hell knows? Force of Negation will come back. This isn't the last time that we're going to see it. No. It is very beautiful, and it will be probably there will be some forced scarcity players just buying them specifically knowing that they're going to be scarce so if you can find one for a good price and i mean like probably like 200 or less seriously i wouldn't i wouldn't kick myself for getting in uh at a decent price on this yeah that is going to represent the very end of the expensive spectrum i think for these cards force of negation is going to be one of those that it's already an 80 dollar card <laughs> The multiplier on the foil retro is just going to 2x, 3x that price easily without even hesitation. But yeah. we've got some on the other end of the spectrum too. Jake likes Soul Herder. This is a fantastic EDH card. It looks fantastic in the gold border treatment from back in the day. Ooh, it's a Mirage, blink baby. effect. We're just, ooh, I we're just love that old yeah. one. Invasion. Seb McKinnon and, yeah. art on the gold frame too, man. Like this in foil or etched is going to look so sick. It's a great effect for EDH. And this is like a 50 cent card. You're going to be able to find this, hopefully, in this retro frame treatment for like four or five dollars. Five bucks would, or less, hopefully. Yeah, yeah, I would snap this up so fast, Jake. Yeah, for EDH, and keep in mind, you only need one card. So, like, just snap one up if you're running that kite into strategy. This is going to be best in slot pimp version of the card. Yes, five dollars. Hopefully, you can find it for five dollars. And again, EDH, you only need one version of these cards. So, make sure you just scoop up a version you know you got to think best in slot pimp factor this is probably going to be the best version of soul herder if you run that the same thing with giver of ruins for one white creature cleric one two another target creature you control gains protection from uh colorless or from the color of your choice until end of turn so this is one of those cards that's just very annoying to deal with it kind of operates like a flag bearer right yeah. you're gonna have players that want to kill it immediately and I will say this as well, this card, I wouldn't sleep on it either. I do think that the foil version will command a big premium because it is a multi-format uh, multi player here. Yeah, this is a $8 rare from Modern Horizons. So when you look at those rares that in a set that was that opened and that played, still commanding that high of a price, people are looking for four of copies of this. That also means that this card is very good in Commander, so people are going to want their copy of it. And just like Jake's saying, the old retro frame, it's most pimp version. We've only got the Modern Horizons 1 printing to get of Giver of Runes. So right. now this is giving us two more variants on top of the base level and the foil original printings. I think we've got it on the list as well, but we don't care about the list. Giver of Runes is one that I would definitely be targeting in this window so that you can get an EDH, what is going to be a fantastic staple-ish card for giving protection and for winning games. Just like Urza, Jake, fantastic staple-ish commander. Now we're going the other way, where, yeah. you know, just like a commander that's always going to be played, right? Yeah, and another card that definitely goes against the, you know, saying like the latter half of this video is going to be budget. This is definitely not going to be one of the no. budget cards. I would put this up there with like your force of negation. Very This is expensive. like a $42 card, so it's about half the price of force, but 
you only need one and so exactly what you're saying about giver jake the foil etched or the foil of this retro frame is gonna 3x 4x easily yeah exactly um i think that urza will be one of the most desirable retro borders to chase this is definitely one of the cards that you're gonna want to look for uh, keep in mind that original Urza got as high as $300 foil from Modern Horizons 1 just because of that scarcity. That was the first printing. So keep in mind all of these cards, they can be reprinted again for any reason. Don't think that Wizards of the Coast is going to sleep on that if they think they can reprint some of these cards and reignite the fan base, get people buying them again. They absolutely will. But until then, this will most likely be the most pimp version of Urza unless you're the type of player who just values the og foil which there's a very valid uh, argument for as well i would say it's a really high target for secret layer as well especially when they start getting hip to you know printing a commander and a few of the staple cards from that commander as a secret layer drop i think that as soon as they start tapping into that well this is the kind of card you could see pop up there but yeah, it's just going to be one of those. And you're right, it's on the expensive end of the spectrum. This is going to be one of those that people are really desiring. Etchings of the Chosen is... We're kind of bouncing back and forth on the on the rarity and cost spectrum here. Etchings of the Chosen is one of the budget ones. 50 cent card, but creature, tribal, staple. And especially if you're leaning into any tribes from way back in the day, this is going to match those old frames on those cards so that you know you can have like a thematically more together deck and that's the reason for variants right yeah like this card is going to be hugely hugely playable in slivers or any like five color strategy type oh, yeah. of, of, of uh tribal thing but yeah for one black one white one other you're getting a really nice anthem with some really nice versatility on it that's going to help protect your commander if you just happen to be in these colors if it fits your strategy it's a beautiful and wonderfully impactful card. We love enchantments here at Jake and Jeweler Magic because they are just so difficult to answer. Oh yeah, definitely. And Etchings of the Chosen, great, great tribal card. Great blue card here, modal spell, very versatile. The other thing that we really like on EDH cards, Archmage's Charm. Jake, this is, I mean, in a, as a counter spell in an in a old border retro frame with that art, I just, I love this card. Yeah, you get the counter spell, but then that third mode is huge in EDH. I mean, the, the drawing two is great at instant speed on the EOT if you need it. Again, this card is three blue for a reason, just because it is so powerful. But gaining control of target non-land permanent with mana value one or less, your soul rings, your mana crypts, all sorts of stuff. This card just slots into any blue deck. If you are running heavy blue, you should be running an Archmage's Charm. Because if there's one thing that MTG players love, it's versatility. Players love to be able to have a swath of options on each card just for different situations because you never know what you're going to get into in a game. Yeah, absolutely. This is a $14, $13, $14 dollar card. I would say that this one's a 2x. A lot of the old frame, you know, retro stuff or any of the variants in general on things that aren't permanents they don't seem to hold as high a price people still really want like obviously we all wanted an alternate showcase force of will from double masters but for instance and sorceries more often i prefer permanents to have the alternate treatment but i still think at 13 14 dollars for the modern horizons which is the only printing again you know 2x on this is a good price to aim for 20 dollars, 24 dollars, 28 yeah bucks, if you could find it for like there. 30 or less even in my opinion yeah pick yeah. it up absolutely in the vein of uh legendary creatures that are always going to be played first sliver here jake is um the cascading sliver most people want to play either the indestructible sliver or the searching sliver as their commander but this absolutely goes in the 99 if it's not yeah. your command one one million percent always goes in the 99 and yeah you just have to think most pimp version this old border i love it it just reminds me of the old days when i first started collecting the cards as a kid before i even knew how to play yeah some of the first sets that i bought were mirage and ice age which didn't have a lot of value in them but they did have these incredible incredible borders i mean i know leds and mirage but that's a rare a lot of the stuff in that set is jank but it does have these incredible old borders and so yeah for anybody who wants you know the first sliver and you want the most the the just the most badass version of it 
this is probably it and it's only going to appear in modern horizons 2 collector boosters yeah that's right 21 dollars for this card it reminds yep. me a lot of sliver queen from stronghold the more i look yeah. at it they kind of match really well it's that same almost the same frame um 21 dollar card i think that this is one little two and a half x maybe three x so if you can get this for between 40 and like 55 i would say but that's also a really mythic, good dude. deal it might even be because yeah. it's mythic it right. might even go like 80 hundo yeah Who exactly knows? it could be a three four x really really easily but yeah. yeah yeah i think that um this is definitely one that i would be targeting as we're trying to target the you know top commander playable old frames here if you want any of these hall of heliod's generosity jake this is a little bit more of a narrow card but it's that same vein man that lands and artifacts in this old frame it just looks so good to me yeah it looks so good and it's a very niche card but for the player that wants this type of effect if you're playing gen or if you're playing any type of uril or any type of enchantment strategy it do one of your totems go to the graveyard do you want to get it back do you want to suit up your general again did one of your big enchantment any other enchantment get destroyed off your battlefield did somebody get rid of your ghostly prison do you want that back force them to use a wasteland force them to use something on your hall of heliod's generosity so that you could stop using those degenerate effects the more enchantments that come out the better a card like this gets over time this is one of those cards in my opinion, that age is like a nice fine wine. Six or seven dollars will get you the base level version from Modern Horizons. I would say this is like a 2x or 3x. If you can get this for, you know, around 15 bucks in the foil or the etched foil, I think you're really getting a great price for it. Yeah, make sure that you have all of your notifications set for etched foil, uh, especially if you're using eBay. eBay is going to let you type in certain keywords and key searches and use those. And they'll send you notifications when new stuff pops up. So make sure that you're hawking all of those listings, making sure that when a new retro pops up, you're one of the first people to see it. And then know what your prices are for these cards so that you can buy in. We can't really tell you what the price are for these cards. You know, we're trying to give you a ballpark estimate, but it's really going to be all over the place. There's going to be people that sell them for high. There's going to be people that sell them for low. Do your due diligence. Look up the original prices of these cards and then kind of feel out what's going to work for you. Jake's absolutely right. When we sat down to start making this video, we set out to give a specific target price range like we had for the fetch lands, but it's much more difficult for a card like this because it's not going to be as widely open. It's only available in the collector booster. It's a very specific frame. We've got the foil and the foil etch, so we're not sure how much that'll be reprinted. And you saw, we don't even know at what you know frequency we're going to see uncommons, rares, mythics from this variant in these collector's boosters. So take it all with a grain of salt. Again, do your research. Let us know what cards we missed. What are you the most excited for in this new set? Uh, what are you chasing in the set? We'd love to hear what cards you're interested in. Other than that, tapped out. We'll catch you later.